This course is all about the single most important ingredient in the Mediterranean diet, extra virgin olive oil. By the end of this series, you'll be armed with enough information to help you make the most of this super ingredient in the way you eat every day. For starters, I'll share a little background about the Mediterranean diet that I've come to know and love while living in Spain. And then we'll cover olive oil in depth and some bits and pieces about many other superfoods that are important ingredients of this healthy lifestyle. And I'll be answering some sort of common questions about olive oil, like why is it supposed to be so good for you? And isn't it fattening? What makes it extra virgin? Should I save it for special occasions? At this point, I think a lot of people are somewhere in the middle of their comfort zone about understanding olive oil. But there's still a lot of questions left unanswered. And if you've ever wondered about these same things, or even asked these types of questions, and you're not really sure you got straight or informed answers, then this course is for you. So join me as I explore answers to your questions and share all the information you'll need to make the most of this incredible ingredient. So let's start off with a little Q&A. Why is it supposed to be so good for you? Well, for starters, olive oil is a plant-based monounsaturated fat that contains polyphenols or antioxidants that give extra virgin olive oil its healthy qualities. The Mediterranean diet features extra virgin olive oil because monounsaturated fats can have a direct effect on lowering bad cholesterol levels and adding to a heart-healthy lifestyle. In fact, the highest extra virgin grade also has a free fatty acid content of less than 0.8%, which means it's really stable at high temperatures and actually one of the best oils you can use in cooking or even in frying. So, extra virgin olive oil is a great choice for putting a little fat in your diet. It's better than okay. It's a really good thing. Isn't it fattening? Well, contrary to the idea that fats will, well, make you fat, we all need a certain amount of fat in our diets in order to function and stay healthy. So it's time to change the way you think about fats. Some fats are good for you in moderation. And like any monounsaturated fat, extra virgin olive oil is one of them. But I also want to take a minute to talk about an overblown piece of marketing hype, light or Extra light olive oil is not low calorie or a healthier option. It's a description dreamed up by big brands to appeal to your goal to get healthy. Because all fats are roughly 110 to 120 calories per tablespoon. So light olive oil just means it usually doesn't have any nutrients, flavor, aroma, or color. In fact, the USDA defines this type of oil as odorless and flavorless. What makes it extra virgin? This simple question deserves a simple answer, but usually it doesn't get one. Olive oil is part of the liquid you get when you squeeze a ripe olive. After all, olives are fruit. So just like orange juice, they're best when they're freshly squeezed. That makes sense, right? And the fresher it is, the better it is. It retains more of its flavor, its healthy qualities, and more of those nutrients that make it a superfood. I can cut to the chase and safely say if it's genuinely classified extra virgin and dated within one year of production, you are getting the very best you can buy. It'll be made from the first processing of the olives and meet the highest industry standards for quality and flavor, which include excellent flavor and odor, a median defect of zero, and a free fatty acid content of less than 0.8%. What about labels that just say it's olive oil? Well, there are three grades of olive oil that matter when you're looking for good solid options to use in your cooking, starting with the highest quality flavorful extra virgin olive oil to the lowest quality flavorless olive oil. The one in the middle is virgin olive oil. Is it good enough to cook with? Sure. It's not quite as healthy or as stable under heat, but it's much more affordable. Would I drizzle it over pasta or salad or use it as a finishing oil on a recipe that took a few hours to make? Uh, probably not. I'd rather treat my taste buds to the best, but there's definitely a place for virgin olive oil in the kitchen. But when you see a bottle simply labeled olive oil, 
please don't bother. I know it's really tempting because it's the best price option and the one you'll see most often on the grocery store shelf, but it's truly not a good for you option. It can be oil that's blended with refined oils. It probably won't have any flavor or aroma, and most likely it's missing the best antioxidants properties of a good extra virgin olive oil. In fact, it may not even be oil made from olives, but a look-alike, taste-alike imposter. Should I save it for special occasions? Great question. As you'll hear throughout the course, extra virgin olive oil doesn't get better with time. So, no, don't save it. If you store it properly, a good oil will be a good oil for up to two years, but please start enjoying it right away and every day. Does color make a difference? Uh-uh, nope, not at all. In fact, professional tasters use little dark blue cups like this so that the color doesn't color their judgment. A great oil can be anything from a grassy green to a rich warm yellow. If the oil is bitter, is it bad? Nope. The flavor of it is a direct result of the type of olives it was made from and when they were harvested. If you like spicy and bitter to pair with a great Spanish or Italian dish, pick an early harvest like Piquol. If you're looking for something really creamy and almost buttery, go with the best seller in the U.S., Late Harvest Arbequina. It's mild enough to go with almost anything. Why are some oils so expensive when I can buy a big plastic jug at the big box store for a lot less? Well, like any handmade artisan products, a lot of time and energy goes into that bottle. And the producer who made it with care should be compensated for their efforts. You can find quality oil, like the Tuscan Extra Virgin Olive Oil sold at Costco, or California Olive Ranch brand in grocery stores at lower prices. Just be aware of what you're buying and who you're buying it from. Not all big producers care about quality when they're trying to sell volume. Oh, here's a good one. How can I choose between all the brands on the grocery store shelf? If you're not buying a brand you already know and love or direct from a small producer at a farmer's market, start by reading the label. Make sure it's extra virgin or virgin. Make sure it's dated and current. Make sure it's made, not just bottled at its source. There are plenty of well-known brands that source from one place or one country and bottle it somewhere else. Generally, that's not a good sign. And this question kind of follows on with the prior one. What can I do to make sure I'm getting the real thing instead of overpriced imposters? This is a really tough question to answer, but I'd say follow the advice of the previous answer. Do your homework or buy direct from a producer you already know and trust. Finally, what flavored oils are the best? Well, in my humble opinion, none. That isn't to say there aren't good quality oils, but I believe if you're taking the time and spending the money to buy and use the best you can, don't buy oil altered with flavors that can shorten its shelf life and lessen its quality. And by the way, flavored oils are notorious for being a producer trick to use a lesser quality oil and dress it up in fancy clothing. If you want, garlic flavored olive oil, mix it with a little finely minced garlic. Lemon flavored oil, add a squeeze of fresh lemon juice to the dressing. Okay, enough for now. In the next part of the series, we'll dig into a lot more about olive oil, how it's made, how to taste it, how to use it every day, and what to pair with it. Because just like wine, there's a bunch of different varieties. So I'll help you figure out how to decide which ones you like best and how to use them. But for now, let's go back out to the orchard and move on to part two.